Hello, uh, this is Poser Pete. I'm back again. I wanted to uh, follow up on my last uh, video with uh, some applications of the things that we learned about analog modeling on the PC3 to stuff other than what we'd consider to be normal analog sources. So uh, there are lots of different things that we can apply this to uh, to make interesting sounds. And this is why I think these techniques are really valid and worth learning in this day and age of um, a cornucopia of analog synths that are available for uh, us to buy and to enjoy from all price ranges from $50 up to, you know, $50,000. So in that environment, uh, learning these techniques can be really fun and interesting if you apply them to stuff besides just the normal sorts of things. So, for instance, uh, this is a soundware package I'm working on called Jump, and uh, it's based on sort of a, a Rolandish um, a signal path, and so it kind of sounds like this. You know, we have these sorts of uh, typical sort of analog style sounds. Let me go ahead and go to this guy. We're going to take this down just a little bit. A little bit. And I'm going to turn on the arpeggiator, and we'll see if I can get this right on the first one. Whoops. There we go. You should recognize that. Um, if you don't recognize that, then uh, ask a friend. Okay, anyway, so let's go to this one. Here's like a typical... sort of piano thing and we can also come back up here where I've started working on some other stuff and we can have like some nice sort of rolling dish brass pass patches and so on and so forth so let's step outside of all of that and let's get to the fun let's take our signal path okay now this is this is basically a signal path that we created in the last uh, tutorial um, I've modified it a bit I've done some things to it for instance uh, if I go here to the pitch page you'll notice that I have plus 600 and minus 600 sets here uh, from this this is applies to the pitch here uh, and, and so the nice thing about this is when you just do um, plus and minus numbers like that it automatically will turn this into both a, uh, to, to a bipolar control source. So that also causes things like amp envelope to flip. So you can invert the envelopes just like you can on some of the original uh, uh, rolling keyboards. So for instance, if I take, uh, just to give you an example, we're going to apply this now to aliasing noise. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but if you come here to the PWM pitch, we're all the way up at 48 steps. That's well up into the range uh, using the two block PWM uh, of, of aliasing fun. So let's play that and you can hear what it sounds like. I have this with a nice slow sweeping envelope. So if you play far enough up the keyboard with um, the DSP oscillators that alias, you'll get to a point where the pitch does not change. I mean, we're talking way up there, okay? This is way above like C10. Um, let me just let that play out for a sec. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, so let's play a little bit lower now. Okay, so this is now um, a nice uh, thing that we can do with all of our techniques. So we've used, um, if we go to the ALG page, we've got noise in the signal path. Um, we have the gain going into the, the filter, we've got some noise coming out here. Um, we've all passed filter. We're doing all the same, or most of the same stuff uh, with respect to phase. We don't really need to do that necessarily with, uh, with these aliasing noises, but uh, there's no reason to change it either. So uh, that's one example of using this technique to make something that is, uh, you know, normally uh, not sought after, which is aliasing noise, and to turn it into something that could be potentially musically useful. Now, let's apply this uh, same signal path, but we're going to use it now on samples. And it kind of sounds like this. Here. 
Now this is using the inverted envelope. So just to give you a taste of that, here's the envelope closing, and then I switch my faders around a bit. And there's the envelope flipped over to open up the filter um, on the decay stage of the, of the envelope. So let me just show you what we've done here. So um, I've taken key maps, okay, like this, um, this Mellotron sample. Now uh, let me play really high up. If you go high enough on the Mellotron samples, they don't, uh, there's, there's no range to them. Uh, let me just show you what this key map looks like. So I've taken the last Mellotron sample, okay, and I have stretched it between C0 and G10. So this is the highest pitch sample stretched all the way across the keyboard. And I did that to give it more of that, um, uh, more of a vintage sampler feel. So I have that in here, but I also have violins where I've done basically uh, the same thing, where I've taken the highest sample root available in the key map and I've stretched it from G10 all the way down to C0, so it's always the same sample root. Um, and, and this allows me, again, to, to get that more sort of a, a vintage feel. And also in the ALG here, I'm using Quantize, and I have it set to uh, 16%. It's just a value I found that I thought sounded nice, so that um, when I'm doing something like this, Uh, you you will hear basically a bit more noise than we get with the other signal path because when you um, reduce the bit depth, which is what Quantize does, uh, of a sample, you also will get extra noise and things like that. Okay, so... So you can get this really these really cool sorts of vintage sampler things coming out of uh, the signal chain and it's got all this all the good stuff applied to it as well um, to make it a bit act a bit more analog I guess and, and to give it sort of that analog vibe so let's uh, go ahead and take a look at another one now we've done the same thing here I've taken the same concept but in this case if we go to the ALG page I've applied it to there's SAW plus shape and there's gain so you know it's over here on the key map page a sine wave so we're basically doing a two-op two FM synthesis, and that can sound like this. Now I have a really... I have a really long release time on this. So I can let off the key, and I'll just keep playing this, the sound. So these envelopes, again, are... are uh, can be inverted so you can have them all you can have them play sort of the same thing and this in this case I have uh, uh, basically the uh, oh, what's that called I can't remember what they call the control in 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 Yamaha land but the gain uh, if we go to the alg page here let's get to it real quick if we go to the alg page here this gain here is on a slider. This is on slider uh, 24. So instead of MIDI 24 controlling pitch, it essentially controls, for lack of a better term, sharpness. Uh, and I know there's lots of words that we like to throw around in the synthesizer world that don't mean anything. You know, things like creamy and warm and fat and all that good stuff. Um, uh, I think in, in, in terms of FM synthesis, let me... Let's go ahead and let's do something like this where we have a nice sustained tone and we'll open up the filter all the way. We'll take the envelope all the way. So this is me moving MIDI 24. sort of analog vibe out of it uh, because we're using all the same uh, everything past uh, these two blocks here is the exact same so this second layer has the filter the third layer has all pass noise and all that other stuff so all those other things are being applied to 
this digital sound. But it has more of an analog feel to it uh, because of because of the fact that we're using it with a signal path. So I know I haven't shown you a lot of how to program in this video. Hopefully by now, if you've watched my other videos, uh, you're at a point where if you see this stuff on the screen, you know how to duplicate it. Uh, and, and you can you can start to uh, come up with some of these, these variations on your own. And, and I would encourage you to experiment. I think there's all sorts of things that you could do with this. Uh, for instance, one of the things that I have not done here, but which would be interesting is instead of on the odd page here, going back up to layer one, let's say you had this, okay? So this is essentially two operators, right? And they go through the filter and they go through this section. What if instead of having these in uh, parallel, where you have two, two op chains in parallel, what if you wire them together? So that for instance, we could take the output of uh, chain number one and send it into chain number two. In fact, why don't we try that? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in 102. And the nice thing is on the PC3, so uh, AUG2 and AUG102 are the same thing, except 102 allows input. So we're going to pull our input real quick here. I have no idea what this is going to sound like, by the way. Uh, we're going to pull it from three. And... Uh, and then we're going to come back here to the amp page. And we're going to go to layer three, which is now cascading. Kind of interesting, but um, so instead of those uh, being in parallel, we now wired them together in series, uh, and, and and that's just the beginning. Um, you could combine this with the sampling stuff. You could combine this with the aliasing stuff. You can combine this with all sorts of other fun things that you can do on the PC3. But the point is, is to instead of looking at these techniques for emulating analog stuff as being strictly applicable in the VA programming land. Stretching your horizons and using this stuff uh, in other contexts and in other ways to uh, make your programs have, I guess, uh, more character or, or more of an analog feel to them as well. So thank you for watching. And there will be more. Um, I've talked a lot about kind of a, a Roland sort of uh, signal path. And um, I want to do some things like uh, talk about this one, which is another one that I've done. Uh, another soundware package that um, is sort of based on the ARP Odyssey and other ARP sorts of instruments, but I also have this. Which is uh, based on a Moog, uh, or Moog, excuse me, because it rhymes with Rogue or whatever uh, that debate is all about. Anyway, so, so, so we have a lot more to cover, a lot more to talk about, because these sound, if I've done these right, have a different character from each other. So that doesn't sound like this. And that does not sound like this. You know, so even though we're using digital synth, we're using, you know, all the same, we're using similar blocks. We're using different aspects of the analog modeling toolkit in different ways to achieve different sounds. And in that way, we can expand our palette uh, beyond what we would normally have if we were just, you know, playing with the built-in uh, DSP stuff and we weren't applying these techniques to those kinds of sounds. So thank you for watching. And next time we're going to dive in some more into analog modeling and simulation.